Hello, this is Dr. Achal Pant and today I am going to talk about hair fall, hair loss in women, its causes and how to treat it. I make videos related to skin and hair transplant. If such content is of interest to you, then please subscribe to the channel. Hair loss is a common complaint amongst women today. We get a lot of patients who complain of hair fall on a daily basis. So, and they are very worried that you know they are going to lose all their hair or go bald. So, I'll, today I'll be discussing what are the usual causes of hair loss, what could be the factors that are triggering this hair loss and how we can tackle the situation. There are many different causes for hair loss. There are many different types of hair loss but the most commonly seen uh, hair loss are of two types. First is chronic telogen effluvium. So patients who suffer from telogen effluvium come with sudden hair loss and they are very worried that they are going to go bald. So that is the most common cause of hair loss seen, chronic telogen effluvium. Second is female pattern hair loss which is like a very slowly progressive hair loss wherein the patients complain of thinning of hair on their scalp and the, uh, there is increased visibility of scalp over time. The hair do not grow long anymore and the scalp becomes visible. So that is the second most common which is the female pattern hair loss. In this video I will mainly be discussing the telogen effluvium uh, cause for hair loss and what its presentation is and in the second part of the video we will be discussing the female pattern hair loss. We get a lot of women who complain of sudden loss of hair. You know in the preceding one uh, or one or two months they suddenly noticed a lot of hair fall. This is a very common complaint today. First we need to understand the different phases of hair cycle, right? So all the hair in your scalp are not growing all together. There are different phases that a hair goes through which is known as the anagen phase which is the growing phase, the catagen phase which is the phase of resorption and the telogen phase which is the resting phase. So at the end of the telogen phase there is shedding of hair. So on our scalp a proportion of hair let's say about 90% of hair follicles are in the growing phase or the anagen phase. And this phase lasts from about 2 to 6 years and about 10%, 8 to 10% of hair are in the telogen phase or the resting phase and this phase lasts for about 5 to 6 weeks. The proportion of hair which is in the telogen phase is expected to fall. That's why we say that losing about 50 to 100 strands in a day is normal because that many hair are in the telogen phase and at the end of the telogen phase they do fall then giving space for the new hair follicle to grow. The hair follicle when it is in the telogen or the resting phase it goes up and becomes more superficial in the skin and then there is a new hair that is growing beneath it. So when that hair above sheds the new hair from below grows out. So it's a normal cycle. So whenever you are losing a few hair do not panic it is normal to lose about 60 to 100 strands of hair. So in this condition called telogen effluvium there is a sudden uh, hair loss which is severe. Okay, so you will notice that you are losing about 100, 200 uh, strands of hair every day and it gets quite alarming to certain patients. And this hair loss is diffuse. There are no patches as such, no particular area which is affected more than others. It is usually a diffuse hair loss. Though in certain patients they do complain of temporal recession, meaning thereby this temple area shows more pronounced thinning of hair. So that could be one of the features otherwise usually patients complain of diffuse hair loss. We can notice balding only after at least 50% of the hair present on the scalp is shed. Then we can prominently notice that there is thinning. Until then uh, you will not be able to make out any kind of baldness or visibility of the scalp. So what is the cause for this hair fall? Stress is the most common factor. Stress in the form of maybe going through an exam or uh, undergoing a huge weight loss in a short period of time, crash dieting or if you've just recovered from an illness, if you've had high grade fever either due to dengue, typhoid or malaria 
or any other illness or if you've had any nutritional deficiency or if you have hypo or hyperthyroidism all this can lead to hair loss even after a major surgery in which you've taken general anesthesia or after uh, giving birth to a child that can also lead to sudden hair loss one of the most common cause today is crash dieting uh, you know doing a liquid diet losing a lot of weight in a short period of time depriving your body of protein which is a very important factor in hair growth so all this can lead to sudden hair loss having a very heavy blood flow during menses could lead to iron deficiency anemia so even uh, iron deficiency can lead to hair loss even intake of certain drugs such as antidepressants or blood thinners or certain antihypertensive medications or um, any antibiotics or even retinoids could lead to hair loss so if you're having a sudden onset of hair loss you might want to look into the kind of drugs you are taking hair loss after childbirth is also very commonly seen so there are certain hormonal changes during pregnancy which kind of thickens your hair which makes it longer and pushes the hair into the growing phase so when these hormones come down to normal after childbirth you will notice that the hair start shedding so you must not worry too much this shedding usually lasts for about 3 to 4 months and it will be controlled once the hormones normalize so when does telogen effluvium occur this usually occurs after 3 to 4 months of any insult or stress that has happened so let's say you had an exam today or you had um, illness today you will notice the hair loss after 3 months right so we always get into a detailed history of the patient and try to look into any event that could have precipitated this hair loss that occurred about 3 uh, to 4 months prior this hair loss usually lasts for about 4 to 5 months and spontaneously resolves sometimes it might be prolonged to about 6 to 8 months but remember that there is full hair regrowth there is no damage to the roots as such just the shaft is shedding so the root will give rise to new hair and uh, there is high likelihood that you will regain your natural normal density so how to tackle this hair fall so whenever you are notice an alarming degree of hair fall make sure that you visit a dermatologist so that you know if that hair fall is either normal limits or it needs to be treated so visit a dermatologist who will look into the different factors which could be causing the hair fall and also try to find out the underlying cause so we usually look into the history try to find out if there were any implicating factors that took place about 3 months back like i said before any stress in your life any event that could have triggered this hair fall once we get into the detailed history we also look into your menstrual cycles how frequent they are how much do you bleed uh, what is the duration of the cycles we look into that as well along with that we also look into the history of taking any oral contraceptive pills sometimes when you're on any estrogen therapy for a long time and stop the treatment then also you could notice hair loss also we take detailed history and examination to rule out any hormonal imbalance or any signs and features of polycystic ovarian disease which could also be the reason for your hair loss i have a detailed video on polycystic ovarian disease on what the features are and how to tackle i'll be linking the video in the i card above you can click up to watch along with uh, history and detailed examination we might also order for a few blood tests so we want to look for any thyroid abnormalities look for serum iron levels in your body if there is any iron deficiency or if there is any zinc deficiency you know these are the usual causes for hair loss in women so we might run a few blood tests to see if there is any underlying deficiency or any underlying abnormality after that we want to look into your hair care routine so there are a lot of people who use um, you know straighteners on a regular basis or hot iron or blow dryers on a regular basis and a lot of hair care products which could actually be damaging your hair 
so we want to make sure that you avoid it when you have hair fall so whenever you are experiencing hair fall make sure that you are not using any of these heating irons and using blow dryers and also using any of these thick hair care products so we get a lot of patients who want to undergo keratin treatment so i usually tell them to, to wait until the hair fall is under control before you go on for any kind of treatment so you would also want to put a hold on coloring your hair uh, until the hair loss is under control because all these factors might not be the cause for your hair loss but they do definitely aggravate it and any kind of heating and any kind of curling or straightening your hair or any treatment might damage the shaft and make it more brittle so you will have a lot of breakage which along with the hair fall might make you feel that it has aggravated the hair loss so you might want to wait before you undergo any such treatment while you're having hair fall so when you're experiencing hair fall uh, what are the things that you must do first and foremost be very gentle with your hair do not wear any hairstyle which kind of pulls or tugs your hair no tight ponytail or high ponytail which kind of tugs your hair so you want to avoid that and go for any loose hairstyle and also avoid vigorous brushing of the hair and be gentle when your hair is wet and a lot of patients worry that shampooing their hair regularly could be aggravating their hair fall no please shampoo your hair at least 2 to 3 times in a week if you are working out or if you have to go in a dusty environment or you have a lot of sweating or you sweat a lot during the day make sure your scalp remains clean so you want to shampoo your hair uh, and keep the scalp clean so just by avoiding shampooing is not going to stop your hair loss and also shampooing your hair is not going to increase your hair fall right so you want to keep your scalp clean use a gentle shampoo uh, and be very gentle with your hair when it is wet and do not use any blow dryers or straighteners while you are having the hair fall other than this in certain patients we like to give supplements of iron or zinc if there is any deficiency that we are suspecting and there are certain studies which show that maybe biotin supplement might help with hair growth though a lot of studies do not support so you know it is up to the treating physician to make the choice you could take iron and biotin supplements for about 3 to 6 months it might help in the hair growth also there are certain lotions that we give if you have a lot of hair loss the most prominent one being minoxidil lotion so minoxidil how it acts is that it improves the blood supply to the scalp hence the nutrition that is reaching the hair is increased and the hair tends to grow uh, longer they are pushed into the anagen phase so the thinner hair gets thicker and the hair fall is controlled but remember that when you first start minoxidil lotion you might notice an increase in hair fall for the first 10 days to up to 3 weeks but it will get controlled if you continue it and this minoxidil lotion should be continued for about 3 to 6 months usually in females we prefer to use 2% lotion twice a day otherwise if that is tedious we even prefer 5% lotion once at night so minoxidil lotion is usually well tolerated though certain patients complain of itching or irritation or even sometimes contact dermatitis to the lotion this is due to the component of propylene glycol in the lotion so you could use a foam formulation then so the foam formulation of minoxidil is better tolerated it does not cause irritation dryness and flaking and you know brittle hair that some patients complain of when they are using lotion formulation so foam can be used twice in a day overall minoxidil is a safe medication to use but women do experience increased facial hair they do notice that the hair on the sideburns on the forehead or in the lower jawline area has become thicker and are looking more prominent and darker so this is a reversible side effect it gets completely reversed once you stop the medication in about 3 to 6 months so you need not worry but this is something that you need to be prepared for in order to minimize this side effect make sure that you wear a headband before you apply the minoxidil lotion so that the lotion does not trickle down on your forehead and on the sides of your face 
Also, after you finish the application of the lotion, you might want to wipe your face and ears so that there is no residue of minoxidil in this area. This might help in minimizing this side effect. Along with minoxidil lotion, there are certain hair serums which contain Capixil or Procapil that is available in the market. Its use is still not very scientifically proven. There are not enough studies to prove that they improve telogen effluvium. But in our experience, we see that it does improve hair fall to a certain extent. So the choice of the lotion to use and the frequency of application can be decided by your treating physician. And also it is important to discuss with your doctor all the medicines that you are taking. When you go for a consultation, it is a good idea to carry all the medicines with you so that they can have a look. If there is any implicating drug, we could stop it for some time if possible. So these are the options for hair loss control. You could discuss these options with your treating physician who will take the decision as to which medicines to give and whether it requires to be treated or only reassurance is enough so certain patients just need to be reassured that it is going to get better over time and you know in certain cases treatment might not be required but if you're having severe hair loss then we do prefer to put you on a minoxidil lotion along with a few oral supplements so relax take a healthy diet exercise regularly don't worry you're not going to go bald it is not going to shed completely it will be controlled in a few months until then, you'll just have to be gentle with your hair and be patient with the treatment. If you found this video useful, please hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel. If you like such skin and hair related content, then you can follow us on other social media handles such as Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Thank you for watching.